Hey team, my name is Chris and I'm a surgical service registrar in paediatric surgery. And today I wanted to talk to you about my top tips for how to prepare for the GAMSAT. Now this is a big topic and not one that can really be covered in a single video. So what I wanted to give you today was an overarching strategy so that you had a starting point in how to formulate your own approach to the exam. The first point is to start with a self audit to establish what you're strong in and what you're weak in so that you can tailor your approach towards compensating for your weaknesses and reinforcing your strengths. The exam is separated into three different sections, reasoning in humanities and social sciences, a written communication and reasoning in biological and physical sciences and establishing which of these you feel most comfortable with is going to change your distribution of time during your preparation. The next tip is to plan to sit the exam twice. This is a small but important pivot in the way that you think about the exam. The GAMSAT is very different to most of the exams that you likely have sat before. It's very long, it goes for an entire day, it's geared heavily towards critical thinking and problem solving uh, in addition to the knowledge that you need. And so the first time that you sit it, it's likely to be quite a disorientating experience. By giving yourself the opportunity to try it out for the first time, you can assess how you feel about the structure, were there any areas that you found more disorientating or more difficult than others, how was your endurance to deal with the exam and was there a different way that you might approach it. And so it gives you the chance to target your preparation in a more effective way, having lived that experience and knowing where your baseline performance is before you then move on to an attempt which is your more serious attempt. Now I know that not everybody has luxury to sit the exam more than once, it's expensive to begin with, but if you do have the opportunity to do it, there's nothing really that surrogates sitting the exam for the first time and actually living that experience to guide your preparation for a second attempt. The third tip is to use external courses as a way of gaining resources to fill the weaknesses that you've established during your self-audit. The external courses that are on offer are usually quite expensive and they tend to be quite short and if you're expecting them to give you the knowledge that you need to cover a broad area like reasoning in the biological and physical sciences it can seem like a bit of a waste of time but if you approach them as a way of gaining practice papers and booklets that are going to guide you in your preparation or talking with instructors who have seen hundreds of students go through the paper and what the weaknesses and areas that people need to work on are it can really accelerate your own preparation. And in addition to that, the GAMSAT has very specific question types that they tend to use. And so talking to someone who's familiar with those question types and can give you some guidance about what the best way to approach them uh, is, can be really, really helpful in your preparation. So that you're not just learning the pure knowledge, but you're learning about how you're likely to need to apply that to the exam scenario. The next piece of advice I have is work hard. Don't underestimate the number of hours that you need to spend preparing for this exam, particularly if you're like me and you're coming from a humanities background and you don't have that foundational knowledge in the biological and physical sciences. I know it can seem like a really overwhelming task when you're trying to prepare for such a broad spectrum of knowledge, but if you dedicate a few hours every day for a few months leading up to the exam, three months if you have a solid foundation, six months if you have some significant weaknesses like I did, that's a minimum requirement to guarantee that you're going to do well in this exam. So if you need to, then find formal learning environments that are going to help you to do that. For me, I went back and redid grade 11 and 12 chemistry at an adult learning school because I felt like that was the most efficient way that I could bring myself up to speed in that particular area. I utilised resources like Khan Academy and worked through their entire curriculums in certain areas that I felt like I needed to in order to compensate for my weaknesses. But there's nothing that substitutes long hours worth of work for an exam like this and you're never going to regret the time that you spent in preparation if it comes to the day and it means that you gain an additional 10-15 marks that you may not have otherwise been able to get. The final tip is don't underestimate the humanities and social sciences section. It can seem quite amorphous and difficult to prepare for but there are specific things that you can do to get better at it. And because a lot of people who sit the GAMSAT come from a science background, it also tends to be an area that a lot of people don't perform particularly well in. So it can be a space where you can pick up extra points if you need to, to put yourself ahead of the pack. So the question is, how do you prepare for those parts of the exam? The first section is the written communication section, where you're given 60 minutes to provide two pieces of written communication for assessment. In this area, I'd recommend using an argumentative essay style. There's a couple of reasons for this. The first is that the structure is easily learnt and it's reproducible to any stimulus that they might give you. The second thing is that there's a lot of online resources which will give you stimulus that you can practice with. So it's feasible to write four, five, six essays a week and in half an hour blocks practice how long it's gonna take you to construct a solid essay, what you feel comfortable with in terms of topics and what you don't. Even just how tired your hand is gonna get while you're writing in that time frame. It's a really good way of reproducibly practicing for that part of the exam so that you feel confident with it when you get to it. 
The next part of this section to prepare for is the multiple choice questions in humanities and social sciences. This is a comprehension based section of the paper and so what it's essentially asking you is to have a look at a piece of literature, written text or a comic strip and say what is the author trying to say? Why are they trying to say that? What could be influencing them? What's your opinion on it and why do you think the way that you think about it? And you're going to have to interpret that text and then answer multiple choice questions based on what is most likely to be correct. This can be a really challenging thing to do if you don't ask yourself those questions all the time when you're looking at pieces of current affairs or when you're looking at books that you might be reading. So the best way to prepare for this is to practice asking those questions. And a good way of covering a broad spectrum of knowledge fairly efficiently is to look at TED Talks. They tend to cover a vast swathe of social sciences and humanities and you can ask yourself those questions and often the speakers will be asking you those questions while you're listening to them and so it's a really efficient resource to look at to try and get yourself thinking in the way that the exam wants you to think. Okay one final bonus tip as you're getting closer to the exam shift your practice away from knowledge acquisition to practicing questions. The reason for this is because the questions in the GAMSAT are different to a lot of exams. They're quite heavily focused towards problem solving and sometimes simple questions are made complex by the terminology that's used. So keeping track of the questions that you've done, whether there were any you found confusing, checking terminology that you may not be familiar with can be a real asset when it comes to the actual exam. And if you use practice papers, whether they're the official ones that you need to buy from ASA or whether they're ones that you've gotten from courses or ones that you've found online, you can time yourself and get an idea about how quickly you're moving through the subject matter and whether there are any types of questions that you find particularly difficult to get your head around. So you can focus on those and compensate for them before the day of the exam. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, then hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any suggestions of your own for people who might be sitting in the GAMSAT, then put them in the comments below and link any resources that you found useful uh, so that anybody who's sitting has that repository to go to and will hopefully get a better result as a consequence. And until next time, enjoy the work.